Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to this week's uh, Q&A session here for local marketing and SEO. Uh, very, very excited that we get to be joined today uh, with uh, Nava Hopkins, who is... Uh, been a friend of this program for a, a long time. She is a uh, pay-per-click expert, uh, Facebook, Google, you name it. Uh, but as always, it's me, it's Jason Brown, it's Ben Fisher, and we're thrilled to have uh, Nava with us. So if you wouldn't mind all saying hello real quick to the gang. Howdy. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to join you again. Um, I, I think the last time uh, I got to have a chat with you, it was... Uh, in, in the last days of my WordStream adventure, doing a kind of behind the scenes on the software. So it's, it's nice getting to chat just straight PPC. Uh, yeah, and, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully answer a bunch of questions. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, hey, just a few little housekeeping notes. First of all, some contact information. Uh, if you want to get hold of, of Navashi's at Just Uno, you can see that at justuno.com. Uh, and her Twitter handle is Navaf. Uh, ben? Fisher's with us also at steadydemand.com and you can find him at the social dude on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, and Jason Brown is at reviewfraud.org and you can find him at Kaiser Holiday on Twitter. Uh, and then my name is Eric Shanefelt. I, I'm the founder of Local Marketing Institute. Go check us out at localmarketinginstitute.com. Uh, sign up for our email newsletter. That's how you get notified of these events and others. Uh, Get our podcasts. These sessions are available on podcasts if you can't, if you can't attend them live. And be sure you join our uh, Facebook group, Local Marketing Institute Connect. We're very picky who we allow in there, but any local business, any local marketer who's legit is, is allowed on there. And we have some of the best marketing experts in the world. So go check that out. Uh, one more little thing. I'm going to little uh, tease next week. Uh, we have Mark Trapakin joining us with him from SEO Clarity. Uh, he is also an icon uh, in the search space as well. And we're very thrilled that he'll be joining us next week. But this week, we have Nava with us. So Nava, I'm, I'm going to let you take over here. Tell us what's going on right now in the uh, pay-per-click advertising space, Facebook, Google, et cetera. I'm just so curious to hear. There's, this week was a week. Um, so I, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know how many of you were able to see that March 3rd uh, post, uh, but all of us kind of went, went up in arms uh, a little bit about, okay, the death of the cookie, we've been hearing about it. This is really, really cementing it because not only uh, did it really crystallize our supports getting is being depreciated. Um, my, my good friend in the space, uh, Mark Irvin, also broke the story about target CPA or cost acquisition, target ROAS going away. So kind of those uh, human controlled signals. Uh, we're, we're, we're all in on first party data uh, and so we, we really are going to have to own uh, email, email lists, uh, customer match. Uh, uh, Ginny Marvin, uh, uh, the new liaison uh, for, the P, uh, for Google uh, between the PPC community, we could not ask for a better uh, voice of reason uh, to kind of help us understand what's going on uh, with Google. Uh, she did confirm that customer match is here to stay. It still is applicable for search campaigns. Uh, display campaigns, shopping campaigns, YouTube campaigns. So that's great news. Um, she did also confirm, um, and but she did elevate that she'll take the feedback back uh, that we still are going to require that, or they are still going to require that fifty thousand uh, dollar lifetime ad spend uh, beyond having the ninety days of active use for customer match. So um, basically, uh, this is all one big rant that targeting uh, is getting flipped on its head. So. Uh, marketers really need to think about um, how much are we relying on audiences currently in our campaigns uh, and how much do we need to maybe pivot a little bit. Um, the other big news, uh, and I, I saw that there were, there were some questions about it, uh, was the iOS uh, change with Facebook. Um, what was really interesting is actually at HeroConf, uh, it sounded actually like the, the Facebook rep was outright saying that just conversions are just not gonna be a thing uh, for iOS, which which I find kind of uh, startling. So it's still a little bit early days to fully know whether conversion tracking is going to be possible if, if you're leveraging iOS customers uh, uh, in, in your Facebook campaigns. But that's, that, that is, all of this is to say, first party data, owning your books and really looking at your reporting 
is more important than ever. So where we maybe got really complacent in our native tools from tracking to conversion tracking, uh, uh, tracking and targeting, uh, we really need to go back to really owning our data, um, not just in terms of who we're looking to direct our marketing investments towards, but also how much return on ad spend uh, was there. Uh, so I, I apologize for a bit of that rant, but it's, it, it's, it's um, a, a good metaphor for the, the wild and crazy week we PPCs have had. So I had a quick question about the whole first party data thing. Let, let, mm-hmm. let's, let's define first party data. Cause I think that that's a, that, that's a term as marketers we throw around, but a lot of businesses may not know and some marketers may not know. What do you define as first party data? And then how is Apple iOS actually going to impact most businesses when it comes to what they need to do with their Facebook ads, or what they need to do with their Google ads? Sure. So First party data at the end of the day is data that you own, that you have earned either by creating an amazing experience. So a prospect or customer has given you their email, has given you their phone, has given you whatever information. Um, You own that data. You are not relying on an ad platform to give you a group of people based off of their previous behavior. You are not uh, targeting someone based off of the fact that they just went to your site. They, you're targeting them based off of the fact that they have committed to you that they want to receive that information. So why that is so important with the, the iOS piece, um, the, the rules of engagement and the amount of hoops that you need to go through to collect that information for it to be verifiable have, have gotten to the point where it's, it is not really realistic that you'll be able to have that group to target um, and that you'll be able to really have that conversion tracking push forward. So we're now living in a world where um, we, privacy is important um, it is tremendously important. We do not want to be those creepy ads. We do not want to be those, those, those creepy marketers that are, that are following people around. Um, but we also want to make sure that the content that we're, we're giving people is, is relevant and interesting. So um, we're going to have to rely a lot more on um, kind of contextual targeting, contextual uh, mapping. One, one of the things that was actually really interesting, and I'll try to put this in as layman term as possible, because uh, um, this was a, actually, a te- from a technical standpoint, even a little bit above my head, but I'll, I'll try to, to, to simplify as much as possible. Um, when you look at how Google and, and Facebook are looking at conversion tracking and targeting, they're moving far more to kind of aggregate personas that they can see and that you then they then make a best guess estimate that this is the group of people that you wanted to target or that you got the conversion for. Um, And so where we used to be able to really fixate on attribution, attribution was the most critical thing to think about in today's world and in the future. It's far more about how is the aggregate looking? How are our books in real life looking? Um, Are we getting our target persona? Are we creating experiences that, reasonably could serve the search intent uh, or the experience that we promise someone based off of our Facebook ad or our YouTube ad or our display ad. Um, does, does that address the question? It does. I think that this comes up and I, I've seen a couple of comments come through from other places that um, I think let's boil this down to more specifics. Does this mean that the concept of remarketing is dead? Right. Because I think people are, you, you mentioned remarketing, people are, are saying, hey, if I can't tag someone who comes to my website and then serve them an ad later on, you know, through, uh, on Google or through Facebook, that's one of the biggest things I hear most PPC marketers say, start with remarketing. So is remarketing dead? Remarketing based off of cookies, I would, if it's not dead, it's about to go through a karma reincarnation. Like it's, it, it's, it, I, I won't commit to saying it's dead, but it's, it's how we've known it is, it, it is, it is no longer going to be a thing, but what we will have is remarketing off of email lists. So if someone gives you their email, um, and this has been a thing actually for a while, it's called customer match, where the user uh, gives you their email. You have to have at least a thousand in, in your list uh, across that 30.4 day period. Um, and you can target someone based off of 
their being in that, uh, them giving you that email. You can even go a step further and actually um, filter that by location. Um, you just then have to have a little bit more information about the person, like their first name and their last name. Um, and I'm happy to provide you um, the template that Google uh, asks for there. Um, Email lists are also very helpful on the Facebook side for lookalike audiences. So to find people that are similar to uh, the traits of that person and, and Google and Facebook have had email lists for years. It's just that that type of targeting, that type of remarketing always took a back seat to cookie base because it's a lot harder to earn an email. You have to actually have an amazing experience. You have to incent someone to to give up that really valuable information. Um, and so we're living in, in, a, in an era where PPC marketers or pay-per-click marketers are gonna have to actually think about the landing page experience. They're gonna have to think about how easy is it for someone to convert. Um, CRO is gonna be a much more important part of targeting than it maybe historically was. And so the comment came up on, on that said, okay, awesome. Customer match on Facebook is awesome. I could even do customer match via email on LinkedIn, but Google, I can't do customer match because I'm not spending enough with them. Is that going to change? So that I, I, I asked that question to Jenny and I actually, I, I brought that up on Twitter and that was where she confirmed that customer match is here to stay, but she's capturing that, that feedback in today's world. If you do not have $50,000 of lifetime spend in your ad account, you cannot do customer match. Um, the reason that Google's given for that is that they want to make sure that you're a credible entity. Um, you used to be able to do customer match whenever, That's but so you ridiculous buy. for small and local businesses, though, that level. That's a ridiculous level for small local businesses trying I, to get I, into this. I, I, I know. <laughs> um, there is hope. There is hope. Um, there are new ad platforms, and this kind of is a uh, is a um, a tie in uh, to, to one of the other topics we wanted to cover um, with local service ads. The cost to acquire leads um, and your ability to to really um, build a list of, of valuable prospects um, that you could then potentially market to uh, on Facebook, where it is a little bit cheaper. Um, absolutely is an option. So uh, local service ads, uh, and I'm going to kind of force us to, to go there because I, th I do think it is a reasonable time, um, are pay per call or pay per lead where you fill out the form. Uh, it's demonstrably cheaper. So uh, when I would uh, work with lawyers who were, would spend $700, $800, $900 a click to, to just get someone to click to the website or just to get them uh, to call on, on, on the traditional Google ad, um, that's a very expensive proposition and the average SMB can't really afford that. Or in local service ads, um, to, uh, and you only are charged per two minute phone call, and you actually, if the recording isn't there, you actually can dispute the call. So if Google glitches and there's no recording, you can actually take the, the call to Google and get a refund on, on the call. The call has to last at least two minutes. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll give pricing for lawyers because that's um, I'm, uh, I've, I've done a lot of work there. Uh, you'd see calls seventy five dollars, a hundred dollars, as opposed for a two minute phone call that you could listen to, as opposed to say that seven hundred dollar click that m might not have even been a phone call. Um, so it's it's a much better proposition. Uh, the other nice thing about local service ads is that at the end of the day. It's so super simple. There's nothing you really have to do. So we're with a, a traditional paid search account. You have to worry about keywords. You have to worry about ad copy. You have to worry about negatives. You have to worry about all these things. With local service ads, it all comes down to how close you are to the prospect and how good are your reviews. That is mm -hmm. it. If your reviews are solid, if you are close to the user, you will, you will rank well and you'll be able to get that business. And it's, Google asks you, how many leads do you need per week? Um, do you, will you be flooded with uh, 50 calls in a week? Well, then budget less. Um, ironically, I actually find it's better to budget more. So say you want to spend $500 in the week, I would actually recommend budgeting 750 to 1,000 because Google historically has actually um, underspent on LSAs, but they, they, they are a phenomenal tool. 
Um, and I'm not sure if any of these that you have pulled up um, have the message uh, feature enabled, but that is a way for you to begin to get those, um, those emails that you could then create that Facebook um, email-based remarketing list. And yes, so, my, my cat says hi. Uh, his name is Chino. He's very I have a question actually about the leads from, from uh, local service ads. Because from what I've heard, at least um, from a lot of the lawyers, is, is that the lead quality is actually pretty low when compared to the qual quality. It depends. Like it, it genuinely does depend on the market. It depends on uh, your, your intake system. Uh, so some folks will complain about bad lead quality, but then they don't respond to a lead in 24 hours, which is a death knell for a legal lead. Um, I'm not saying that the lawyers that you work with or that you talk with have that problem, but like that, that is a very real concern is that you're not able to follow up with folks um, in time. Um, the other thing to consider is that cheap leads might not have the same quality, but at a, a volume game, even if the quality is, is less, you're actually able to get more leads because you can afford more leads in your day with the budget that you have with this cheaper format than uh, on the other. So it's, if you can afford both, sure, do both. Um, but with some of the changes that have been happening, I, I would actually really encourage SMBs, especially local SMBs, to really consider this ad platform aggressively. Yeah. And the other, the other thing with LSAs is you can get verified uh, reviews from your LSA. So Google's able to track who came to your website or who called in and then show that, that verified review. And so when you click into those profiles, you know, and you drill down, it'll start showing some, you know, verified, you know, reviews. Now, of course, you know, we know spam is getting into LSA. So we're seeing, you know, I think we've seen examples of, um, Lenny Kravitz leaving a lawyer, you know, glowing <laughs> reviews or Pete Buttigieg. Uh, we're also seeing cases of negative reviews uh, hitting LSAs that are showing up now, but they're not verified reviews. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's another extension of, of your marketing campaign. You know, uh, you know, Mike Blumenthal says, you know, Google is your homepage. Jason Bernard says Google as your business card, but I think more of Google as your portfolio. So it's just, it's another extension where you can, show off and highlight who you are as a business and, and all of your, your great contact information and reviews. So just uh, one some person uh, tapped in here um, to clarify, are the reviews that you see on, an, on a local services ad, an LSA ad, are those the same as your Google My Business reviews? They are. They are. Um, so when you set up local service ads, it will import in your Google My Business. If you remove your local service ads uh, camp, uh, campaign or account, any reviews that you secured through lo your local service ads uh, will be removed from your GMB. But the GMB reviews are imported and that's actually a verification process that happens on Google's side that um, when you're getting your account set up. Awesome. So, so your GMB reviews will flow into your local service ads, but any reviews you capture specifically through the local service ad won't necessarily flow back to your GMB. No, they, they will. Oh, they will. Um, it, they will. It's just that if you ever stop advertising through local service ads, those will be removed from your GMB. Oh, so I see. So, so they, they do flow, flow back, but when you stop advertising, those go away from your GMB? Yes. Interesting. I did not know that. I I'm not, oh, did not that's... know that either, actually. Um, I'm huh. seeing that. I, yeah. Nice. Um, okay, one more question that, that had here. So I'm seeing a lot of yuck and yikes. Um, for full transparency, the reason that, that they can be separate is that there's a link that you will set when you are setting up your local service ads. The amount of reviews that are specific to your local service ads will be a fraction of those that are associated with your GMB. So with your GMB, and I definitely defer uh, to you, Jason, to speak to, to, speak to um, the organic piece of it. Um, but when you're thinking about your, your reviews, that is all you're thinking about. Most people are going to go straight to your um, GMB to leave those reviews. It's only if you send out the specific link that is associated with your local service ads. So if you want to avoid that risk altogether, set the link up and never use it. Um, yeah, that makes total sense. 
yeah. So I, I, I don't want to scare people away from a, a genuinely <laughs> great tool just because there happens to be like a little glitch there, but it's, um, it's avoidable if, if it's not through that nut link. Yeah. And there's, and there's so many nuances when it comes to LSA. So like, you can't like, you can't click on a review profile and you can't copy a link to like share that review that's come in on LSA. And so, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of, you know, disconnect with it right now, but there's also nuances when we get into, you know, uh, uh, you know, call extensions with, with the map pack ads too. Yep. yep. Um, I know that was another question about local search ads. So if you want that at, um, in the map pack, um, that requires that you're advertising uh, through traditional search. So you'd have to pay that $300, $600 click if you're a lawyer. Um, if you're uh, in other industries, uh, it might be less. Ironically, plumbers and lawyers have really expensive cost per clicks. I don't know why. Um, I guess urgency. Um, but if you're if you're doing that local search uh, that local uh, search ad, which is the ad in the GMB um, map pack, uh, that is enabled through having your GMB synced to your Google Ads and allowing for that to show. Um, that is just an automatic thing. It doesn't cost you anything extra to have it there, um, but it does require that you're running paid search. I just want to make sure I can answer the question um, for everyone. I, I put the answer in um, in the chat. If you want to just keep your LSAs running, there is a minimum $50 a month that you need to, that they'll charge you um, if you're not running any ads. Um, ironically, you might actually spend less running the ads. Um, but yeah, it's, if, it's, it's 50 bucks uh, to keep it running per month. So the question came up here then says, so like to, to get this ad that you would see in the three pack, right? So you know, that normally requires on, on, search, a paid requires, search campaign. Mm -hmm. Right. So th this is an extension to a search ad. It's not necessarily an LSA ad. Correct. Got it. And people want to know, uh, people are asking, can we uh, buy this placement only instead of a general search ad campaign with different placements? No. Nope. And you can't even guarantee that that will show. Um, and, and, yeah. and, and the other caveat, which is really annoying, if you make any updates to your, your listing, like your hours, you have to recalibrate your, your ad. Otherwise, it'll show outdated information. Just really annoying. Got it. So just to clarify for everybody, you, you occasionally will see these ads that will show up. Uh, kind of above the three pack and turn it into a four pack, if you would, that ad only comes if you're running a Google search ad campaign and you cannot specify that that's the only location you want. It will just come through. It's just one of the rotations. It'll throw whenever the search campaign uh, delivers, right? And Google determines that. There's over a hundred different search result pages that are possible <laughs> Great. If, it, yep. if it serves neat. Um, yep. That's actually why... I went so uh, aggressive on local service ads. Um, there was an interesting question though in the chat about, well, if you're not eligible for LSAs, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, and which categories support LSAs or is that expanding? It's, it's expanded actually quite a bit. Um, there, there's far more categories that are eligible um, last year. And, and that's no coincidence uh, with COVID there was uh, a lot of fear uh, associated with investment uh, and a lot of people pulled uh, their, their ad spends back as we kind of had this uncertainty and lo and behold, magically um, financial categories and legal categories all were available for local service ads. Um, if you are still not eligible for local service ads and I'm, I'm not sure what industry you're in, um, another option for you, and this is, going to sound bizarre to hear me recommend it because like I normally would never recommend um, smart campaigns is actually looking at those smart campaigns or running the ads through your GMB. Um, and the reason for that is that the tools that, are, that Google makes available to itself far exceed the tools that they make available to you as an individual advertiser. Um, and ironically, because your ad investment would be quote unquote too small to gather data quickly enough, you actually might see better performance 
running a smart campaign through GMB than you would running a paid search campaign on your own or even like a Facebook campaign on your own. Um, just because that the algorithm itself is, is going to give itself more tools. Like it's going to allow itself to benefit from all the other accounts, whereas you as an individual advertiser will have to build up that data yourself. Can you expand a little bit more on the smart campaign with GMB? Uh, yeah, so in GMB, you actually can run uh, Google ads straight through it. Um, right, so like, like right here, creating an ad. Yeah, the AdWords, what used to be called AdWords Express. Yep. Um, it's okay. Go for it. And so you're just, uh, what's your main advertising goals? Do you want to get more calls? Do you want to get more sales and signups? You just, you pick your goal. Uh, you click next. You say, all right, here, what are the ideas that I, I want to go after? Is it, is it for my profile or for my website? Um, I would actually probably say um, business uh, profile. Um, and that would be your GMB. Next. That's what the ad would look like. You'd be like, am I happy? So basically after they click the ad, they're gonna come here to your GMB profile is what it says. Yep. Okay. Cause you might not so have a website. So GMB becomes your landing page basically at that point. Yep. Yeah, this actually addressed a really good question that our gentleman asked earlier on in, in the chat about, well, why am I, why don't you have a website? Well, we'll maybe talk to that here in a, in a little bit, but bottom line, I won't go through the rest of the process here because I don't want to fully set one up, but you access this through your GMB dashboard. Yeah, so and you- When you click the ads. Uh, and, and I do not recommend this for everyone, but if you are budget strapped, starving for leads and you do not have the time or the wherewithal to gain the technical expertise to build something that that would function off of a small budget this is a perfectly reasonable solution um, the reason why the ad platforms evolved in this way is they recognize like there's there's this whole swath of smbs that are never going to be able to to leverage the power of their platforms because either they're budget strapped or they, they, they're they asking someone who's brilliant at one thing to become brilliant at 20 other things. That's just not reasonable. So that's, uh, that is why I would recommend looking at, looking at that if you truly have no other solution. So let me see if I can boil this down a little bit. We're talking, we're talking Google ads. If your business qualifies for, if you're in the right category for a local service ad, is that's typically where you would go first? That is where I would go first. Okay. And then if you're in a business category that does not qualify for a Google service ad and you don't have a big budget uh, out there, you would probably go through the GMB dashboard and create a smart ad campaign, which used to be called AdWords Express, and, and go through that process. That would probably be the recommendation that you would do for smaller businesses on a budget that, can't, that, that aren't in the LSA category. Uh, correct. Like, and again, when I'm talking, the budgets I'm thinking about for this is that you have a thousand dollars or less per month to invest in your marketing. Like that is, that is who I am thinking about when I suggest this, when you, when you begin to have 5,000, 10,000 a month, like that, at that point, you will be able to get enough data where a traditional paid campaign will likely make sense. Um, and the point about needing a website that you own, um, I agree with that 90% of the time. That ten, There's a 10% of the time where a website that um, is bad because you just don't have the wherewithal to maintain it or you don't have um, the budget to take care of it. Nah, the Facebook, GMB, like they they've created so many tools that are a better experience than a bad website that would actually turn you off more. Um, so if you, if you're going to invest in having a good web website, of course have a website, but if you're not, you're going to turn people away because it's bad. Let's explore that just for a second here because the, the, the gentleman did ask this and I think it's worthwhile just diving in and Ben, Jason, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this here. So I 100% agree with you. If you've got a if you've got a sucky website, 
fine. You, you, you use your GMB listing, but um, even if you only have a one page website with some, that looks good and has some good information and tells people who you are and gets you, gets you in touch. It doesn't have to be ultra fancy. No, uh, that's perfect. better. Do that. That's better, but make, make it professional, make it mobile responsive, that whole nine, whole nine yards. And here, here's kind of the reasons why I was chatting this gentleman offline here and said, um, you know, uh, bottom line, you don't want to rely on Google to represent your business. Um, you know, it, it, I guess the old adage of, you know, never build your house on rented ground con concept. And, you know, I think the other things that was, um, there was a, we were talking about, you know, it's, it's another way people can find you. It also helps you in the organic search results, not just the Google My Business results. It can actually help boost your Google My Business place. It's the place where you'd, you'd like to drive most ad campaigns, most emails. So bottom line, you know, he, this gentleman was saying that a lot of other business owners are telling him, you know, hey, we've got a LinkedIn profile, a Facebook profile, a Google My Business profile. Why do I need a website? So I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts on that. If I agree with you. Yep. Bottom line. Yeah, yeah pretty much. A website. <laughs> send it to yeah, your website. I, Why send it to rented property? Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and you, yeah, you want to make sure, you know, that if you do have a website, not only is it, you know, a great website, but you also want to make sure that it loads really fast and that you have your CTAs, you know, set up your call to actions. If you don't have your call to actions, it loads slow, then yeah, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you're not going to do very well with your ads and won't convert. And not, and not to mention, I mean, an important thing I think to speak about here is that if you're not going to use your website, then send it to something which can actually A, B, test your ads. Um, you know, there's some really good tools out there. Unbounce, I've used that before. HubSpot, I think, has some great solutions as well. And Just you know, shameless plug. <laughs> there you go. Yes. You go. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, but absolutely. I mean, if you can control the experience, why give it all over to Google? Um, you know, unless you have a ton of really freaking awesome reviews, but still that might not even get traction. Good. Well, there was, a a, there, there was a question um, about how many, should you set up multiple profiles? Um, the only reason to do that is if you have a true benefit or if you've already set up the GMBs for each of the different locations and they have different reviews, um, but also from proximity. Because uh, one of the ranking factors for local service ads is proximity. And so if you have one office that's 20 minutes away, another office that's 50 minutes away, but your main office is 50 minutes away, if you don't have one for the 20 minute, you might miss out on, on ranking. So that's, I, I typically like do one profile per, but it's yeah, I, I completely agree, by the way. Um, I've been dipping my toe a lot into the LSA world. And um, I'm, what I'm seeing is, is especially with a personal injury, is, is that they're opening up real storefront locations. They're getting new GMBs just so they can connect them, gather reviews, and get them flowing into the LSAs. But more importantly to what you're saying, which is from a conversion factor, is if I have an office located in LA, but I have my LSA ad showing up in Whittier, well, probably somebody would want to see the reviews and the information about Whittier versus my LA office. Would you uh, agree with that, Neva? Yes. I think it sounds like it's important to have the, the, the different LSA profiles for your different office locations because of the reviews and like you said, Neva, also for the proximity. Um, one final note on this, then I, I, I promise I'll let us talk about something else. This is just- Okay. It, it, it's, it's pressing. Um, Pinkerton and Google um, have done a terrible job of documenting all the processes and understanding what each is meant to do. It is very easy to get trapped in um, background check land. And so when you're, you're going through it, remember um, different industries have different background check requirements and you only want to list the number of employees that actually need the background checks. Um, because if you list all of them you will be required to do a background check for every single employee before your profile will be verified so for example lawyers only owners need to whereas a plumber service that's going into your home everyone needs to go through a background check hmm. um, so a lot of reasons why background checks get held up or 
your your profile doesn't quite go live, uh, that that, is, that can be a big reason. The other big reason, and this is something that they should do a much better job of notifying, um, and they don't actually have documentation about why it gets disapproved. Headshots and logos get disapproved all the time. And there's no rhyme or reason why one gets approved and the other doesn't. You just have to check and pray and keep re-uploading and eventually it will go through. So for those of you that have started, um, keep persevering. I promise it's worth it. Um, for those of you that haven't, uh, it is worth it. Just be prepared for somewhere between a two to four week minimum setup time before you actually begin investing. Like it's not something that you can flip a switch and, and you're, you're off. I think, I think, I think Google dropped working with Pinkerton, like I think uh, a few, eight months ago, I think Tom Warnington, uh, so that they dropped and, and switched vendors. So it might be a new vendor issue as well. But I mean, as we know, with all of Google features in support, there's there's never any rhyme or reason as to why one thing gets action and another thing doesn't get action. You know, it's just, there's no set rules. And, and I think the other, the other crux is, there's no community help forum for LSA. So like LSAs are completely siloed. They're on their own island. There's no way to reach anybody, get any form of support because it's like, you know, whose department is it? Does it fall under? Does it fall under paid ads? Does it fall under GMB? And so, you know, it's those, that's some of the things that we hear the most complaints about is if there's a problem, who do you go to? Who can you call? Yeah, not to mention one of the big things that I've heard, and then I have a question, is, um, for instance, you'll go through the verification process. You may be held up for, say, months. I was talking to one who was held up for the last 13 months, and they just passed verification. They got that. However, once it passes verification, then it gets handed off to the ads department, and then somebody has to flip a switch somewhere in between there to actually turn the account on. And nobody wants to claim responsibility for which side actually needs to do that. So I've heard about that too. But I wanted to go back to one quick thing that you just talked about with the uh, verification process, and that is the background check. So you made a really great point there. But one thing I think uh, that might need clarity is, is when you're saying only include your staff, you're talking about the service staff that actually goes out to visit somebody. And you don't want to do somebody, say, a clerk or a receptionist or things like that, right? Uh, so it depends on industry. So there are some where you need everyone. There are others where you need the owner. So at every industry is unique. Um, so it's, this is one of those uh, questions where it might actually be best uh, to follow up after with kind of like a, a cheat sheet of here's who needs what. Um, I'd be glad to do that. Like We'd love to publish idea. that. So yeah, we'll 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 get the the, the most up to date. But in, in terms of a baseline rule, the people that go and do the work need to do background checks, and the owners need to do background checks um, for financial and legal. Um, anyone that is practicing ideally should, but only the owners have to. Um, yeah. You guys ready to, uh, I mean, are you guys ready to move on to some Facebook questions per chance? Sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, this is, don't be wrong. This is awesome. I think we could go on ad infinitum with this, but I think we've got a few questions that come through in the Facebook ads too. And I'd like to maybe tackle a, a few of those. Um, all right. So there's one question we had here. Um, uh, what if Facebook does not get back to you about an ad appeal? So I've had an ad, I've tried to get a hold of, 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 of Facebook to correct my ad, but I, but I cannot get my ad to be reviewed after an ad appeal. What do you do? So the first step is actually chatting with their support. Their support is, is a lot nicer um, and, a, and I find very, very, very knowledgeable. Um, that said, um, it does depend on level of investment. So I, I have found that when I'm chatting in with support um, for a client that maybe invests uh, 5K a month versus a client that's spending 100 or so, it's just, it's a different level of experience. Um, like I might get a, a blog post back on one and, and an actual reply back 
uh, that are reply back uh, for, for the other. Um, the other thing I'll, some, I'll sometimes find is that because of COVID and the auto checks that they put in place for finding disapprovals, um, slightly adjusting the ad copy can bypass that appeal. So if you slightly change the text uh, or you change the call to action button or you swap out an image, um, that, that can help. Um, if all else fails, um, build a new build a new ad set and and go again um, because fa Facebook for better or for worse functions on the premise of new is better um, the more you build into old things the, the less likely it is to do well in fact if there are too many disapprovals if there's too many issues with ads in an ad set the ad set will just stop performing regardless of how good the ad might have been in there initially so um, if you really are getting stuck, I would just set a new campaign or a new ad set and, and go from there. Do you find any particular uh, actions or particular things that you do in a Facebook ad that trigger a, uh, you know, a, a, a review that needs to be a, a appealed? A really, the most common one, and it's really unfortunate, um, is Facebook will think that your ad copy is a special category when it's really not. Um, so a really good example of this was I was, I was running an ad for uh, a class action suit for truckers uh, to join it. But Facebook thought that the ad was about me looking to hire truckers. Um, and so it kept flagging it for this is, this is a, this is a hiring post. Like you're hiring. Why didn't you designate that this was hiring? Because you're, by sending it as a special um, category, you actually will lose certain targeting options. Um, and so that's why there are such sticklers about it. Um, and so ironically, actually, by chatting in through Facebook chat, I was able to get a note just put on the account. This is not ever what it's about, like this company that never does that. And I was able to bypass that, thankfully moving forward, but that is the most common. So you just want to be careful about how you word your ads. You never want to make it at all seem like it could be political. You never want to make it seem like it could have to do with financial unless it actually does. Um, hiring, things like that. Employment attorneys are always interesting because they're talking about sexual harassment suits and things like that. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you put any kind of terminology like that into their immediate flag. A hundred percent. I just have one question about their support, Eric, real quick. And that is, so Navan, so if somebody reaches a roadblock, let's say they've gone through chat, right? And chat's basically given them a nonsensical answer. Would you recommend that them act, a user go back to another live support chat or do they tie the, the cases together? Um, I've seen both happen, which is not good but I've seen both happen. So it is worth trying multiple times, but if, if you do get stuck, just create a new ad set, create a new campaign. Cool. Thank you. So I think this is a, a, just a good question, kind of along the lines of our Google ad question, where should a business start? Let's talk about Facebook, Instagram, because they're all the same thing. Where should a local business start with, with Facebook, Instagram ads? What's the first thing that, that they should do to try to take advantage of that channel? So it, it depends greatly on budget and it depends greatly on um, the ability to manage leads. Um, I find that Facebook lead quality tends to be lower than Google's, um, not because Facebook is a, is a lesser platform, simply because people tend to do impulse actions on Facebook. People are intentionally doing things on Google. So it's not that they forgot you, it's that it was three o'clock in the morning and they were just doom scrolling and they happened to engage with your content. Uh, it's don't take it personally if the lead quality is lower. Um, but that said, Facebook is demonstrably cheaper. So from a volume game, if, if you have a thousand dollars a month to invest in your digital marketing and you are not necessarily a good fit for local service ads and you, you don't want to invest the time in, in your GMB, which I don't know why that's true. Um, Facebook is probably a good fit for you. Um, if, however, you have the effort or you, you already have your GMB established, um, I would really go more the local service ads GMB route 
the when you start getting graduating to five thousand a month, ten thousand a month budgets, and and you have the wherewithal to think about um, ad creative, you have the wherewithal to think about targeting, you have the wherewithal to think about your buyer personas. That's that's when you really want to start thinking about Google search, uh, display campaigns, um, using the creative uh, maybe that you've used on. Uh, your Facebook campaigns to teach you what your people, what would be good creative to create for a display campaign and vice versa. Um, YouTube um, and story campaigns are powerful. Um, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for recommending this, um, but I would actually recommend looking at Fiverr to create cheap video content for you that you can then use on YouTube and on Facebook to build your audiences uh, because YouTube is so, 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 so cheap. Um, and even if you do um, a Facebook live or YouTube live video talking about your service like that, that's another way that you could go about it. Um, but given that YouTube, you only pay uh, on skippable ads, if the user makes it past 30 seconds, that's, that's a great way to build free branding, but it's also a great way to build a list of people that you can engage with because that, that is an audience that you can uh, target, people that have seen your ad, people that have subscribed to your channel, things like that. So if, you're mo if you like content, um, if you genuinely enjoy that creative process, um, YouTube might actually be a great place to start. Um, and Facebook videos, Instagram videos, um, and stories would be a great place to start as well. Yeah, just, just to clarify for everybody who's listening, YouTube is part of Google yes. and Instagram yes. is part so of Facebook. Google, Google ads encompasses search, display, discover, which are kind of those Gmail light box pop-up ad things. Uh, and then uh, there's YouTube. Uh, there's also, there are app campaigns. I just, I don't know how much that plays into this crowd. Um, when we think about Facebook, Facebook that will cover and you, you advertise through the same channel, Instagram, WhatsApp, their audience network. Um, and then, of course, Facebook. Microsoft Sorry. Ads is cool too, but it follows the same rules as uh, Google Ads. So I have a quick question about the YouTube advertising for you. Mm -hmm. So um, I've personally experienced, and I have a lot of company for our custom clients who have done like the in-stream advertising, and it is ridiculously cheap. Um, but I think for, for other local businesses, and for, my, for myself, honestly, because I'm dipping back into it a little bit, is so when you're talking about hiring somebody from Fiverr, right? Um, are you talking about having somebody help you just put together like a collage type of video? Or are you talking about like an explainer type of video? Like a, um, like a 15 second, here's my logo, here's my value prop, like here's the main points, mm -hmm. make, make it pretty. Because... I have many skills. Graphic design is not one of them. And so f for me to, to, to go hit my head against uh, a, a video creation, there's just better uses of my time. And mm -hmm. so if I can get a $30, $40 video off of Fiverr, I have no shame in doing that. Absolutely. Now the quality might not be the same as a top tier designer creating it. And like you absolutely should um, engage with expertise when you know you, you have uh, the budget to invest and you know that it's, it's a critical area for you. If you're testing the platform, there's, there's no harm in doing a cheap test. Agreed. Agreed. Thanks. So here's a good question. Um, do I need to have Facebook business manager to effectively run a Facebook, Instagram ad campaign for my business. And maybe not everybody knows exactly what Facebook business manager is either. It might be a good thing to just All right. quickly So um, Facebook business manager is a operational suite that lets you manage uh, your ad account, your uh, Facebook page, your data collections, like your pixels and things like that. Excuse me one second. Um, it is a very useful tool to manage multiple campaigns all at once. If you are just starting out, it's okay. You can run a quick ad, a sponsored post just to test the waters through your Facebook page. The moment though that you really wanna make a serious investment in Facebook, part of the reason why I would very much recommend um, having a Facebook manager, um, business manager set up um, is so that you can integrate 
uh, with uh, different platforms for, for tracking that you can uh, be able to really see what's going on. Um, and you also can begin to really build those audiences. It's much, it's much harder to run um, a targeted campaign and one that is geared towards return ad spend just from your page, uh, because that, that is meant to be a very simple solution. Um, so short answer, no, but you should. Long answer, it's, it can be a gradual process to get there. And there are many, many great tutorials about it. I've also found a lot of good tools in Facebook Business Manager when it comes to some of the things you're going to need to do for you know, verifying your domain, uh, mm -hmm. you know, validating your, your your business as a legitimate entity. Um, you know, especially if you have any kind of an e-commerce operation, the ability to manage your catalogs and do Facebook catalog ads and things like that is is it's it's important. But you're right for for just basic ads, you probably don't need it. But well, you 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 reminded me. It's it's great. Um, Ad platforms are increasingly requiring or at least heavily suggesting what's called two-step um, authentication or two-step verification. Um, you, sh you must do that. Uh, I'm not going to even say should. You, you, you must. Um, this is to not only uh, protect your account from being hacked and potentially having really private information like, like your credit card uh, stolen. Uh, it's also very important to make sure that you know exactly what is happening with your business and with your, your, your messaging. Um, you should not have shared accounts. Like don't create uh, like a general marketing email that you give everyone access to. Everyone should have their own ID that's verified. Privacy is super, super important. Um, and actually the, the more functionality that you want to leverage within Facebook and Google ads, uh, the more that they're really going to push you uh, to have a two step verification. So that's, that's another just good reason to use business manager. Cause that's um, one of the ways that you can uh, manage that process. Yeah, I can also step in here and tell, say a couple little things about that too. So two step is also required in Facebook. If you're managing any pages, which they consider to be large audiences, I've seen it anywhere from 1000 likes basically all the way up to a hundred thousand likes. Um, so there's that aspect too. Also, if you're using a shared account that can actually flag the account, it can disable your advertising and can also disable your pages too. So that's why having individual users and using Facebook business manager is really great for that. I'll throw up maybe one last question here on the Facebook stuff. Then we can maybe wrap, wrap up cause we're going to run out of time here soon. Um, interesting question came up though. It says, what do you think about the effectiveness of Facebook or Google ads? on the audience network or messenger versus on Facebook or Instagram itself? Oh, I muted my, I muted myself because I had a coughing fit and then I, I forgot to unmute. Um, it's a, and, and so you didn't hear my side that it was a loaded question. Um, it can be good. It truly can. You should never use the same creative across all channels. You should have creative for each individual um, channel that you are going to run uh, paid spots uh, on, on Facebook or any of its associates uh, for. So if, if you're going to run the audience network, you just wanna make sure that you tailor your creative to those sorts of spots. And you wanna be mindful of the fact uh, that if your call to action is call, um, is that going to read well on certain display, uh, like display oriented spots on a desktop? Um, is your, are the people that you're looking to target, um, have you uh, mimicked them uh, in your creative? Have you spoken to their wants and needs and desires? Um, yay or no. So it's, I think it's it's a it's a reasonable path forward. Um, it certainly can be a cheap path forward. Um, it can also hog the budget. My preference when setting up campaigns is to actually have an ad set per uh, channel. So you'd have one campaign targeting one major objective, and then an ad set per. Um, and it would be on campaign budget optimizer. Or if I felt comfortable enough investing dedicated budget, I would set a budget per uh, channel. Um, but I, I typically will never have one campaign that has, a, or like one ad set that has all of them mushed together. 
My, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on stuff. My, my typical guidance is if you're going to, if you're not doing a remarketing campaign, I oftentimes will leave off audience network and messenger because I find that the response is better on the native platforms themselves. But if I'm doing a remarketing campaign where I can control who I'm remarketing to, and I've kind of more narrowed down the audience and kind of eliminate some of the fraud that way, then I typically will open up to the audience network. But, but um, that's just kind of what I like to do for whatever it works. I, 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 I think that that's, that's perfectly sound. Um, yeah. I, I know we're very short on time. There was, there was a good question in there that I want to make sure I can quickly address about Gmail campaigns and, and privacy. So Gmail campaigns were actually retired there. It's now all part of the Discover uh, campaign type. But Gmail campaigns, even when they were a thing, never actually allowed you to target specific emails with an email message. What they allowed you to do was to target interests, keywords, websites that uh, someone might have expressed interest in, and then you serve them creative. So a really good use case for those sorts of that type of campaign was to target a competitor website with your offer. Um, because someone who was in market for that or showed interest in that would be a good fit for what you do. Um, Discover uh, kind of absorbed Gmail campaigns. Uh, I'm a little bit heartbroken about it, but that in terms of uh, using an email list to target, um, those are available for search, uh, display, uh, YouTube, and shopping. Um, there's a reason why Google left it off for Discover. It, 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 that may change, um, but it's the the point is valid. Like, yes, you 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 targeting a specific email off of an e off of an email list. That yes, that is a privacy violation. And at a certain point, like you might as well just send an e send the email yourself. Like, don't don't pay to do that. <laughs> it sounds good. Well, Naval, thank you so much for your time. We, we really appreciate it here. This has been a, a fascinating uh, discussion, especially having the cat in the background, which everybody seems to love in the chat. Um, but we'll have to have you back on sometime because this was just, uh, I think this was really resonated with a lot of people. Definitely appreciate your time. Of course. Um, and if I can ever be of any help, uh, feel free to tweet at me at Nava F. Uh, I do the uh, Ask the PPC for SEJ. So you can, uh, send questions there if you like. And uh, happy to share my Justino perspective. Yeah, go out and check out justino.com as well. Uh, some good stuff out there. And Nava's working for him full time now. So it's a, it's a good thing to check out. We'll talk to you guys soon and hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Nava. Bye, everyone. Bye.